There wasn't much to do in Kansas in the early 1960s but go to school and watch TV. Shows like Adventures in Paradise, My Little Margie, and The Ann Southern Show were my favorites. That is, until I saw her. Joy Lansing, in a show called The Bob Cummings Show or Love That Bob. Oh my God. The minute I saw her, I fell madly in love. I would not miss one episode just to be able to see that face, the face of an angel. That was how I spent my time until my parents decided to move to California in 1964. I was just going into my senior year of high school and was very sad to leave. Sad but excited, knowing I'd be near Los Angeles, so much closer to Hollywood and all of the magic I was sure it would bring to my life. We moved to a little town called Charter Oak, a suburb of Covina, about 30 miles from Hollywood and not far from Pasadena. That was where I finished high school and started to understand a little more about myself and, surprisingly, my sexuality. I was new to the school and in my senior year, which was a real bummer. It was hard to make friends because almost everyone was in a clique. I, of course, gravitated to the prettiest and most popular girl in school, Sandy Becker. She was lovely, with long blonde hair and brown eyes, and went on to become Miss California in 1966. We became friendly, and I guess my attention to her became suspect and rumors started. She had a steady boyfriend, whom she later married, so I was really just a puppy hanging around to do her bidding. Sandy became Miss Charter Oak of 1965, and my greatest pleasure at the time was to have her crown me Miss Charter Oak of 1966. I was becoming aware of my attraction to beautiful women. I knew I was different from the other girls and couldn't have cared less about dating boys. I went to the proms just so I could dance near Sandy and be part of the social scene. After high school, I went to Mount St. Antonio College and took a few drama classes, hoping to learn enough to help me with my new desire to be a star. Through my dad, I became acquainted with a young woman named Carolee. We became good friends and ended up moving to Hollywood together. Carolee worked for an entertainment lawyer on Sunset Boulevard, and I found a job working very close to her, also on Sunset, for Joe Whitman, whose son, Stu Whitman, was a fairly popular actor at the time. It was actually Joe who introduced me to myself. I don't know how he knew. Maybe it was because I drooled every time he told me stories about his encounters with Hedy Lamar. For the life of me, I don't know if they were true or not. Only 19 and fresh out of Kansas, I was ill-prepared for what was in store for me. Joe was in his late 60s and had something I was sorely lacking, street smarts. I couldn't wait to come to work to hear the stories about Hetty, and for months he kept promising to introduce me to her. The night finally came, and I was supposed to come to the office after hours, and she would be there. We waited. Well, I waited. Then he said that he guessed she wasn't going to make it, but... He had a lady friend who would love to meet me. I look back now and can't believe I didn't spot the setup. There she was. Not Hedy Lamar, not anyone I would have hoped for, but I was so ready that it didn't matter. Though it wasn't the circumstance I had imagined, I had my first experience with a woman. I knew from that point on that the feelings I had held for so long were a part of my nature. Naive enough to think all I had to do now was be myself. I began my new life, happy that I was finally me.